Good morning, y'all. It's uh, Mr. Travers, Terry Redland in Cleveland, Hawthorne 2, uh, here to give you a little lesson in case you have to be home this week. Uh, let me switch it around. We're working with this week. You should be on page 10, checking out the D's, G string notes. Uh, of course, in our DNA string, still too. Uh, our bow rhythms from page 11 as well. And I've been teaching students the twinkle from the beginning. And one little reference here. Uh, here are our violin notes. We're just adding that G string there at the bottom. That's our new one. We need to write a special couple of lines called ledger lines just to get down there to write it. Our viola music adds G right here. And if we ever wanted to write C in our future, we do get to use a ledger line too. There's our viola open strings. And then cello bass. Oh, it's a little complicated. If we want to write a cello C string, we do have to write ledger lines, but our new string G is right there. If you're a bass player though, it's up here. Cello, bass. We both share the D and we also have different A strings. Cello A string is a high one, bass is a low one, and then the special note from the bass community is our E string down there. One of the first pieces that you get to play after Vivaldi on G is two string rig. And that goes between the two strings G and D. If you're a viola player, of course, it's gonna be G string in the middle here and D string in the middle here. Cello players, it's gonna be our G string and our D string just like that. Bass players, our D string and our new string G here. Make sure you're using the whole side of your finger to play that note. Tip of our finger isn't good enough for bass. We need the whole thing. As you work through page 10, please work through the pieces by first saying the notes G, G rest, rest, and follow each one with your eyes and your finger, or your bow, or whatever you'd like to use. A magic wand would be fine too. When we get to two string reggae, then we have to shift between the G string and the D string. And I hope you notice that they start taking away the symbols in the middle of the note. They expect us to start seeing that this is a G, and to see that G in our mind without needing the training wheels. That's what I call these training wheels. We're gonna take them off and then be able to read G, G, D, D, A, D, G. No matter what our instrument is. That's viola again, whoops. Where's my viola book? Oh Let's no! Try that again. Whether you're reading your violin book or your viola book, it's the same notes, same rests, just in a different place for your clap. G, rest, D, rest. Make that your first step. Read through your music, whether you play the cello or the bass, the viola or the violin. Save a little time today. I'm not going to play through all the pieces on page 10, but if you're a violin or viola player, I want to give you a pointer to remember about. Make sure your fingers are on their tips. When you look at the violin, you should see your fingertips right up here and your thumb maybe a little bit over there. Tap her or him to make sure they're there. Fingertips straight and make sure our wrist has this habit a straight wrist like that Some of us may see this from time to time. That's a bad habit to avoid and There's a good reason for that for our lesson this week, and you'll see why in a minute But violin and viola players make sure we have this wrist strong top to our fingers and fingernails facing our nose So we get this view one more thing violin and viola players When we hold our instrument make sure this elbow is underneath us Get back from the camera. We want that elbow underneath this way, not swinging away from our body, but towards our body and under, towards our right side. That makes for really good violin and viola playing because later we're going to start adding this in our lesson. Cello players not to be left out. Some good habits when you're doing pizzicato is left hand up here. Keep a nice wing like this. Don't let it rest and hang over on your instrument like it fell asleep. Don't do weird things with our arms. Keep it right here, fingertips, just like the violin and viola players, and have a nice wing like this. If you can make a wing, where your arm is up and over the cello instead of going blah, 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 blah. you are gonna make some really strong muscles from when we start adding the fingers to the string this week. Bass players, th same thing when you're doing pizzicato. Arm up here, off the strings. So we have a nice wing habit to our playing because when we start adding that left hand, we're gonna need an arm that's up high, not down like this. This is a bad habit for us bass players. This is better. Rhythm number one. First, again, make sure our left hand is like this, my violin violas. Our bow hold is the best thing we've got brought to school today, or brought home. Make sure we have a bent thumb. Some of you might have thumb on the bottom, that's fine. Violin and viola players, this is our bow hold. Rhythm number one, here's how I want you to practice it. Step one, vertical. One, two, three, four. Down, up, down, up. Rest, 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 repeat. Down, up, down, up. Rest, rest, 
breath. That's step one. Step two, shadow bow over your instrument. See if you can shadow bow right in that center lane, but don't touch a string yet. Down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, rest, 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 rest. Down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, rest, 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 rest. It doesn't have to be that fast, by the way. You can choose how fast you go. Last step, choose a string. Choose any string you like. Keep it straight and on the string. Rhythm number one, here I go. Rest, rest, keep the bow still on the rest. Rest, 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 and that's it. That's what I want you to do for all the rhythms. So for example, rhythm number three is much different. Down bow, up bow, whoops, rhythm number three is different than that. <laughs> Down bow, rest, up bow, rest. Over the instrument, it looks like this. Down bow, rest, up bow, rest. On the string, it looks like this. Rest, rest. Cello players, when we play, I'm gonna have to really back up for this. There we go. When we play, make sure our cello bow is here. Now we're still gonna do vertical bow like the violin and viola players. Down bow, up bow, down bow, rest, rest. I made a mistake there. Down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, rest, rest. We hold our bow up, okay? And then shadow bow is gonna be over our strings horizontally like this. Down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, rest, rest, rest. And then we choose a string. We did rhythm number three, for example, down bow, rest, up bow, rest. Shadow bow, down bow, rest, up bow, rest. On the string, rest, rest, all right? Now, Mr. T is standing up to do this to save time, but of course, you're gonna be in good posture. Your hand's gonna be up here like that, and you're gonna look really good on the cello. This is the same thing as I told the cellos and the violins. Start with a vertical bow practice. Down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, rest. That's rhythm number one. And then shadow bow over your string, right in the middle of the highway. Down the bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, rest, rest. Then try on a string. Rest, 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 rest. Do that method with all rhythm number one, two, three, and four. You don't have to do all four every day, but you can if you want to. One a day would be fine. Make sure you get through all of them in the whole week, though. Very important for your bow practice. Keep your wing eagle strong. All right, first part of Twinkle is not something that's in the book, but it's my way of starting to introduce the fingers to uh, placing them on the string. This is how we change notes. Listen to this. I put down my first finger. Now the string is shorter or longer. Which is it? Now the string is this long. Is that shorter or longer than before? Well, a shorter string makes a higher note. All right, so here's how my violin viola players need to train their hand. First, you have good habits here already. Straight wrist, elbow underneath, fingertips right here. You can see your fingernails. Now you're going to make a stop sign. We're going to slide it back. Now if you look here, there's a little gap on between. Some people have shorter fingers, so that gap might be smaller. But just make sure of this. You see that crease at the base of my finger right here? That has to be above the fingerboard. If it starts slipping below, we start to get in trouble and then our fingers look like this, but we don't want that. We want our finger to come to the string square. The square tabletop, our nail facing our nose like before, see how that translates to here? It's the same thing. That's why I want you on your fingertips. By the way, fingernails need to be short. Now I don't get my nails done, I can think you can tell that, but the fingernails are short. I want you to cut off the white at the ends to be a to be the best musician you can be when we start putting fingers down. All right, we move from here to here with our stop sign. See how my right hand's helping out just in case? I move it right there. Now, we're gonna put our first finger down today on the A string. This is a violin, so that's my second string. And I just want you to practice pushing that finger down a little bit. Now, once in a while, you're gonna have to tell your thumb to stay relaxed. So bring some awareness to your thumb by just tapping there real quick. Just tap that thumb. When our first finger comes down, it should be gravity helping us sink down into the instrument. Now you might get a sound like this when you test it out for the first time. That sound means that your finger needs to be a little deeper in the string. Okay, now my fingers are up so you can see better, but all fingers should be sort of curled this way. Here's what it looks like from the other side. That finger is nice and square. Okay, now today we're just gonna work on the first finger because what we're doing is twinkle, twinkle. I'm gonna 
show that to you again in a slower practice strategy. Then freeze, change to A string. Freeze, place your first finger. Take as much time as you need for each step. Freeze, release your first finger. And that's the twinkle with pauses. This is a great way to practice if you're finding this a little overwhelming. Think about the next string. Think about and press your finger down. Make it set. Tap our thumb for awareness. Sink in deep. Here we go. Now you might not need that much time to play this piece. That's fine. Just do what you need to do. If you need more pauses, take the time. If you need less pauses and you just want to go for it, go for it. Good luck. Listen to yourself critically and ask, did I make a successful one? And once you get that first successful one, you repeat your success three times, five times, 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times, be legendary. Up here. Now, cello players, we have to work out our hand. So what I say is start with a little Coke can or whatever you want to call it, Mountain Dew, water. Water's good. See that shape right there? That's a C shape. Middle finger, thumb. I want you to start getting those two buddies to be friends because we've got a tragedy here. They can't see each other anymore because of the neck of the cello. All right, here's another warm-up. That's called the cocaine warm-up. Here's the catch the fruit from the tree warm-up. Got a mango in my hand. I'm going to toss it, though, over my shoulder. Do it again. Catch that mango. Bring it here to our head. Now we're going to mash it and make, make juice. Mango juice. Last one. Bring it to your cello. And now we're going to find that first tape closest to the sky and put it on our A string. That's the new note we're learning today. Tap that five times. See if you can do it without the thumb doing a workout. The thumb just should, needs to be bent in the back of that cello there. Nice bent thumb. All right, here's the sound of it. If I can hold the cello and do this all at once. First finger. Release. Now cellos, our, fing our strings are a little thicker than violin and viola strings. You gotta sink deep in, let that weight sink into the string. That's the sound we want. You might get a sound like this. That's the sound of not pressing deep enough in the string. Let it sink in. That's what we need. All right, my bass people. We have two options here. There's a basic option and then an advanced option. Not to make too bad a joke about being basic, but that's the basicness of it. So we start off. Open D, open D, open A, open A, first finger. That's tough. Same thing as the cellos. We're going to bend our arm to the cello like this, or do the Coke can approach and bring it to the strings. Pressing down this A string is going to be tough. We have to sink in pretty deep for it to sound. You might get this sound. Not quite there yet. We need to press a little deeper. Sink deeper in that string. So there it is again. Basic version. Open A, open A. First finger, first finger, open A. Now, advanced version. You can try playing just like the cellos do. We're gonna hold down A on our G string with our first finger. And then we play B with two, three, four joining the party. Now this is called our fourth finger. Now I happen to like all four fingers down because it helps to press the string down, plus the G string on the bass is the lightest one to press down. Here it is again, twinkle, twinkle, advanced version for bass. Up. I did it. I made a mistake. First finger. Fourth finger. That's the beginning of twinkle for bass. Good luck with that. Yeah, putting fingers down under your string is probably the next toughest thing we're going to do this year. And if you get a little frustrated because my videos are so short, maybe you want to take a look at page 12 and 13, 14 and 15. 12 and 13 start our third finger and our fourth finger notes. Here, my violin viola friends, is what we're going to look for for our third finger note. See how that thumb is relaxed off to the side. we got a straight wrist, square fingers on the tips. Same thing up here, fourth finger. Now, if you're wondering about first finger, second finger, we got some great pictures here to look at on page 14. First finger down, second finger down. Those pictures there will be really, really helpful for you. My cello bass friends, same thing. See how those fingers are nice and rounded. And it's hard to see her arm, but her arm goes all the way down here and has a nice triangle to make her cello wing. And last step for my basses, our hand and arm is kind of like this. It's hard to see this because the person's head should be really close right there. So they probably took a special picture, but we still want to have a nice triangle to our bass wing as you do this. So those are just extra credit pages to help you get a visual for what your fingers should be looking like as you start to bring fingers to the string and being able to play new notes. Good luck this week, everybody. Take care.